All right, Reds franchise. We are 38 and 54. Not doing too well, but we are going to get through a big chunk of the season here. It's funny. I introed the last video talking about how, you know, I need to speed up the pace a little bit. And then I saw comments being like, mm, he wants to speed up the pace, but only did the draft. It was a draft episode where we focused on the draft. I wasn't going to do the draft uh, and then do like a bunch of different games. You know, we signed some of the picks. We simulated a little bit. Our number one pick, if you saw it, was Alexi Vigna. We took him at number seven overall. He has agreed to sign. However, as you guys told me in the comment section that you don't actually get to see them until August 1st, was it? But this episode is going to be a very, very different uh, vibe, I would say, overall. It's going to be very, very fast in comparison to the last episode. We're going to get through a big chunk of the season. Slot value for this pick is 560. You can up the interest. I'm going to keep that at 59%. I'll give him 420K. He can play third base as well. And Mike Avento has signed with the Reds. We don't know his overall. It's probably not great. We don't know his potential. It could be very good. And the only guy left to sign is Dwayne Church, who we should be able to negotiate with. You guys told me it was 50% when I can actually do it. And Dwayne Church has declined and his interest has dropped. All right. That's okay. So we, might, we might give him a little bit more money, but that's okay. We So we need um, Cliff Dell and Bobby Turner's interest to go up significantly. He needs to be at 50% before we even offer him at all. Now, he looks like he could be electric, but who knows if that's true at all. But uh, we'll certainly get through a decent chunk of the season. Critical situations are turned on, but I'm not sure how many we're actually going to do. Also, I am live on Twitch. If you ever want to see these live, be sure to follow on twitch.tv slash bangles. We get a new primer, SV Kid. Appreciate you. And let's get into it. Let's choose the 27th here. As the NL has defeated the AL in the All-Star game. We're the NL, so we appreciate that. Although, pretty much nobody on the Reds actually made the All-Star team, unfortunately. And we're not going to sign draft picks just yet. I don't know that so much has changed. Ryan McKenna still is going to be injured for four to five weeks. We'll keep him on the 10-day IL, and we do have a moment here, and I think we are going to jump in. Tyler Stevenson at the plate. Will Benson and Spencer Steer are on. Jonathan India with a home run in this game, and you can see our rankings there. We're actually fifth in home runs, which is interesting. Or is that home runs allowed? Might have been home runs allowed. I think we might have been significantly worse in terms of actual home runs. But Tyler Stevenson doesn't need a home run. A base hit will do. We could load the bases for our cleanup hitter. Although I wonder if that is Jake Fraley. Who lefty-lefty would not really give us a great matchup. So we just... We'll try and get on one with Tyler Stevenson. Let me see the scoreboard. It is Jake Fraley, I believe, in that cleanup spot. So we'll try and stay patient. Get on a pitch. There's strike one. I thought that was going to be more inside off the plate. It's kind of weird going back and forth from strike zone to zoom camera. The pitches don't exactly seem to be in the same spot. No real point trying to advance on that. Two outs. Don't want to make an out at third base in this scenario. 3-1. Obvious green light. That is a pitch to hit, and we are just early. Stevenson rolls over, and that is the third out of the inning. So couldn't come up clutch. That was a really, really good pitch. And we are to extras. Ghost Runner is on second base. Luke Weaver trying to get an out. We don't really want to give him something to pull. But I guess it doesn't really matter if he just ropes it right back up the middle. Kepler fields in center. Electric speed for Mitchell to get to second base on that. Max Kepler back from injury, though, is nice. But that is uh, not good. That's a cutter right down the middle. So not exactly what we wanted there. And I already don't want to be here. Runner goes for third. Stevenson's throw. Not in time. Oh, man. These are the type of simulations or scenarios I should simulate. I got to know we're not going to get a clutch hit. And then I have to pitch with Luke Weaver. That's not good. Locate a fastball, Luke. Even Willie Adamas, who's such a free swinger, didn't even consider it. So out ahead of that fastball, though. Maybe we'll try off-speed. And we'll try to get Adamas out in front. 
That's a hanger, and he just took it almost right down the middle. If we can somehow hold this to only one run, that would be a huge win. I almost want to consider an intentional walk to William Contreras. We are going to warm up the new red Bruzdar Gratterall. He's been pretty awesome so far uh, this season. We just traded for him. And that's kind of a long-term move. That's not something that's really going to factor in too much right now. As Will Benson's playing first base and evidently cannot play first base, he just dropped it. That was the easy second out of the inning. What's happening? What's happening? And the Ghost Runner does exist in the regular season, right? So it'd be kind of weird to turn that off. Will Benson just can't play first base. We have Joey Votto who plays first base. Chad Pinder can't, but why would Joey Votto be getting the full day off here? We need a first baseman. Brain dead. Brain dead computer. There's ball one. This could get ugly really, really quickly. And stick to this fastball. Luke on Luke here. Classic pitching is just so terrible. That's going to fall. That's going to fall. <laughs> oh my goodness. How do I simulate this? This is brutal. We're going to quick manage here. There's another run. We're going to pitch around him. Then get the strikeout. Down by three. We got to face the closer, Devin Williams. Stevenson on second. We have Fraley, India in the five hole. And Will Myers. So the CPU has reorganized the, uh, the team here to put India fifth. Unless I did that previously, which I don't remember doing. So I, would I have Votto second? And I certainly would not have Kevin Newman leading off. Surely not. Come on, Jake. All right. We could fight back in this one. If Fraley gets on, tying run at the plate. So we would have an opportunity if we can just make Devin Williams work. And that ball is hit deep to center field. Going back is a center fielder at the wall, leaping. Can't bring it down. And Rake Fraley has put us within one. A big two-run home run to straightaway center field. And we are not out of this one yet. Jake Fraley, what a swing. Fastball, kind of up and in. Fraley can't quite turn on it, but gets the bat head out early enough and has the strength to power that one out. Didn't quite know if that was going to get out of here right off the bat. But we are right it back in this. Devin Williams got to be a little rattled. Just got to work the count, have good ABs, get that confidence and that energy down. And we can win a game here. We can have a walk-off in Cincinnati, 2-0 to India. This is a huge spot. Got to find a way to get on base. That's ball three. On the black, no call. He's been wild. Give me a four-pitch walk. Give me a four-pitch walk. Right down the middle. That was red light all the way. Was never going to swing there. We might even red light 3-1. Just to try and get on. That was a really good pitch to hit, though. We're just trying to be extra patient. Do whatever we can to get on base. Williams is really tough to hit. And that is ball four. Patience is rewarded. India with a big walk. And here comes Will Myers. We are paying him a boatload. He's actually... He's improved his numbers. He's improved his numbers. Got to be a little bit better, though. We're paying him so much. He's got to be our best player. Come on, Will. Again, being patient. The confidence already going down from India. That same pitch was a ball, what, four pitches ago? Is this a joke? The zone is not consistent, I'll tell you that. The zone is not consistent at all. 2-1, swinging away there, fouled back. A couple of strikeouts from Will Myers today. A little bit out in front of that one. Here's a 2-2. And just staying on it. Back-to-back -back strikeouts and then back-to-back -back walks for Will Myers. 
on base at 500 for the game. Looking to improve that. Jason Vosler back from injury is the man on deck. He's got a decent bat on him. This is a huge payoff pitch. Here's the 3-2. Ground ball at third. They get one on to first double play. Tough pitch. It's right there. Will Myers just pounds it into the ground. And that is a very costly double play. And that is momentum crushed. Confidence now going up for Devin Williams. Already tough enough to hit. That's like the number one thing you can't have happen in that spot. Is a ground ball double play. The chat hates it. Chat not a big fan of Will Myers at the moment. Vosler rips it foul. 106 off the bat. Frozen rope. Just could not keep it fair. When that ball's hit on the ground, going to be a tough play for Adamas. Spinning and winning. That is the Brewers' win. And uh, we lose a close one. We fought back. Uh, pitching, obviously, an extra has really let us down. What are you going to do? We're tough. Uh, that was a tough one. Uh, Cole or Col Colgate, thank you very much for the two month sub. If you guys saw how it was spelled, it's C O L G 8. That was tough for a minute. And Tusaki, thank you for the prime sub as well. Uh, not the way we wanted to start here. I think we're going to turn critical situations off for a bit and then finish the month of July. Maybe we'll see what's happening in that Dodger series. Not going to sign draft picks either. Want that confidence to go up. But after back to back wins, we should have a little bit more interest in here. Bobby Turner still needs to go a ways, but Church and Cliff Dell are at 50%. So we are going to go ahead and offer. I think 499 is a decent offer for Cliff Dell. That's above slot value. And he declines it. Stays at 50% though. He just wants more money, which is bizarre for a guy who's injured. And then Dwayne Church... We'll offer him a contract. I think 403 is, is fair. That's way above slot. And Dwayne Church has decided to sign. His overall is going to be low, but his potential should be really good. 82 to 90, and that's with 70% scouting progress. He should be quite good. So now it's only Bobby Turner and Cliff Dell left to sign. Bobby Turner is a third baseman, 6'4", 223, who should have a pretty good bat on him. I don't know if the power is ever going to get there. But he, he should have a pretty good hit tool. And could I, I really could envision him starting at third base at, at some point. Not sure if he will. We have Ellie De La Cruz. We have some other guys in there as well. Uh, Baby Shark, thanks for the raid. Let's go ahead and uh, simulate through a little bit more. I think we're going to wait on the draft picks again. As Mitch Pidich. Pidich. I have no idea who that is. Elbow sprain for double A. Out for a few days. We'll put that to auto and auto. And we'll try to sign draft picks again, I think. Because Bobby Turner now is at 54%. Slot value is 820. I think this is fair. And he declines it. These guys are such divas, dude. It's unbelievable. Cliff Dell. I'll give you more money. That's 495. Declined. You're at 58% interest. Why are you declining? Why? Unfortunate. I want to, listen, I want to sign them for as cheap as possible. But today is the trade deadline. So this is pretty massive. We are 3-7 and seven in our last 10. We're 17 games back. And we're 44 and 64. So let's go ahead here and go into our contracts here. So is there no contract for players anywhere? You know, just look in roster. I want to see, I'd like to do it like the way Madden does it, where I can see expiring contracts. And we don't really have that. So we're just maybe looking to trade older players. Joey Votto is not a player we can trade. He's got a no trade clause in real life, and he has pretty much no value anyway. He's getting destroyed. I'm being told that budget is where to go. Oh, okay. 
So Will Myers, is he only on a one-year deal? Will Myers is getting traded. Oh, that's 100%. Will Myers is gone today. Kevin Newman. You know, he should have boosted his value a little bit. He's been hot this year. He's got a 758 OPS. Now, he is arbitration eligible still at 29 years old. That's crazy. Baseball is crazy. Um, we traded for Yanni Chirinos. We're going to keep him. Lucas Sims we can hold on to. A lot of the guys that are arbitration eligible, I don't really want to trade right now. But somebody like Will Myers, I absolutely have to trade. Now, Luis Sessa probably should go as well. He's having a decent year, but is this someone that I'm really going to re-sign? Unlikely. Now, for Kevin Newman, it's been somebody I've really loved to just hate on. He's just so easy for comedic value. So maybe I hesitate to trade him. Max Kepler, I think we can keep. Will Myers has to go. I mean, I've never been more sure about anything. So let's just see what type of offers are out there. And we can kind of evaluate. So he's a 78 overall, C potential. Let's just look for all. Because I'd be down to get a player depending on who it is. Dean Kramer, I definitely don't want. Kyle Bradish, no. Now, what, what are we even looking for? The Yankees want to give us IKF and Albert Abreu. Pass. Jose Siri is actually a decent option, I think. Should we look for prospects, though, maybe? Prospects could be the move. We might be able to get like better players that way. Although, I'm not loving the options that I'm seeing so far. We could also throw somebody else in there. And I kind of want to trade to a competing team. So it seems a little bit more realistic. Gavin Williams is an interesting option. Gavin Williams, a potential... 69 overall, nice. It's only 23 years old. We're going to go ahead and do that. And I, I could have looked for more, but you know what? We're probably trading Luis Sessa. Getting Gavin Williams, I think, is going to be huge for us. I think that's a big move. And he's a really, really good prospect in real life as well. Has struggled in 2023. But I think this is, you know... Somebody that could end up being a future ace type for us. Will Myers is somebody who, whatever, you know. <laughs> we're looking to get rid of that contract. We just need Gavin Williams to develop. Home run per nine going down by one. Hits per nine going down by one. I don't love that. But the other things are developing, even if slowly. He's got a potential. And we have control. We have so much control. He's not a free agent until 2029. Chat seems to like it as well. Dominance, thank you for the resub there. And uh, pitching is definitely something we were looking to get. So I like that. Luis Sessa, I think we'll think about trading. And now we could like theoretically have our, at, I mean, maybe our full rotation of the future. Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, Graham Ashcraft, Yanni Chirinos, Gavin Williams. It's not bad. Now, who else could we trade here? Who else do we talk about? We talked about Luis Sessa, obviously. Not trading any of these prospects right now. Kevin Newman was the other name we talked about. I think we're going to hold on to Kevin Newman, as funny as that sounds to me. Max Kepler, we could trade. Ryan McKenna's done a good job. I know he's injured right now. But Ryan McKenna is somebody who is fine right now. I know we do, we do have control over Max Kepler for another year. He's not really slugging at all, is he? I mean, that's pretty horrific. Horrific. 
I don't know. I, I think maybe it's just going to be Luis Sessa and a reliever, maybe. Or we could just also add Luke Weaver, who I don't want. And he's one of our higher paid players, as is Hunter Strickland, who hasn't even made his debut with us yet. Kurt Casale's there. Let's see what we can get. Let, let's look at prospects again. Now, the problem with prospects is it's a big question mark as to whether they're going to develop or not, which is true of real life as well. But we might try and get a bat with this trade. Getting Gavin Williams, I think, was a huge move for us. But getting someone that can actually hit would be big as well. Chat's telling me to maybe trade Spencer Steer. I don't really think I want to do that. I don't really want to trade Christian Encarnacion Strand either. He's way better in real life than he is in the game. Uh, Junior Caminero, by the way, for the Rays. Look at his numbers in real life. He is raking. I think he's playing at high A. But in the game, I mean, I don't really want to get a C potential player. Jackson Job, I know it's another starter, but that's actually someone that could be good. Jace Young, there's potential there. We do have a lot of infielders. I'm kind of looking for like a, a good outfield prospect. What we could do is look for that guy first and then try to trade Luis Sessa. Tyler Soderstrom. That's interesting. Now, he's like not really a catcher. He's catcher first base DH type. Rakes. That's interesting. I wish we could take a look at him before... Oh, we can actually. We just hit cancel. I mean, he's got a good hit tool. Can play first. Can play in the outfield. Trade logic is bad. I agree. That's, that would be... That would be a significant get for us. And he's... He's not really playing that well. At AAA. It's not terrible. But it, his attributes aren't awful. And he's only 21. And it's another Tyler S on our team. But he's... I'm, I'm saying he's not... The, Tyler Soderstrom's not really a catcher. So... We're not really getting Tyler Stevenson. He is... He, could, he definitely could be a first base... Uh, for us. Now... Maybe we'll go about this the reverse way and look for... I wish I could sort by only outfield. Can we do player search here? Let's do primary position any, secondary position outfield. There we go. Outfield, we'll do max age 22, and then we'll do potential... As minimum, we'll say like 86, 84, 84. Let's look at that. Okay. Now, who realistically could we, could we grab here? We could send Luis Sessa back to the Yankees to get Jason Dominguez. He's at AAA. He's developing quickly. Not really hitting that well. Although his hitting numbers are not that great. Corbin Carroll is going to be off the table, obviously. George Valera is an interesting option. He's already at the major league level, not hitting at all. But is developing and isn't awful in the outfield. One of the top prospects for the uh, Guardians. Jackson Churio is one of the top prospects in Major League Baseball. His hit tool is not really that good in the game. Alec Thomas I wouldn't really want. Zach Veen's interesting, I guess. Riley Green's only a 69, really. Don't really want to trade for a guy at the majors yet. Drew Jones is at AAA. Yeah, I would lean George Valera right now. Just because he can actually hit. James Wood is developing nicely. He's hitting all right in the minors. Bobby Barrels, Robert Hassel. His numbers just are not that good. But none of the prospects are. None of the prospects can ever hit. 
I don't know how they ever develop into anything good. Mm. I think I like the idea of George Valera here. 60-60 against righties, not terrible. Discipline's pretty good, which is kind of what we're looking for. Let's see if we can make a trade for him. So, it might not be possible. We're going to add in Luis Sessa. Ooh, we definitely could. We definitely could. I think... So, Luke Weaver moves it a little bit. What if I added Kevin Newman? They would do it. They would do it. Um, that's intriguing. Luis Sessa, Luke Weaver, and Kevin Newman. You know what? I'll tell you what, Kevin. You, you proved me wrong for half a season. Congratulations. You're headed to Cleveland. Which, is that an upgrade over Cincinnati? I think that's a lateral move. I think that's a lateral move. But that is the trade we're going to make. Uh, Valera probably gets sent down. But those are two pretty big trades for us here at the deadline. And we now need three players to get called up. So Gavin Williams we're going to keep down. Alex Young has done a good job in real life, but I can't imagine calling him up with those per nines. That's just terrible. Uh, I'm going to call up Justin Dunn. Better per nines, younger Higher potential. I think could do a better job for us. And yeah, there will be no funeral for Kevin Newman. Good riddance. See you later. I'm going to call up Hunter Strickland as well. Got to add him to the 40 man first. He's at the major league level. So I need to call up one more. So I, I traded a couple of pitchers. I think we'll call up a hitter. Matt Reynolds has done a good job at AAA. He actually might be able to hit for us. So we traded we traded a shortstop. Noelvi Marte is hitting pretty well, but it's not time for him yet. Ellie De La Cruz is starting to hit a little bit better, but it's not time for him yet. Um I don't I don't want George Valera up. He's going to AAA. We call up Jay Allen. Let's call up Jay Allen. I gotta, I gotta add him to the 40 man, of course. How could I forget? He's at least good defense in the outfield. His discipline's not terrible either. He honestly looks a lot like Ryan McKenna. Austin Hendrick can stay there. Will Benson, fine. And we need one more at the major league level. Let's see, let's see what the actual rotation looks like right now. We have pitching. We don't we don't need more pitching. I think we're fine there. Let's let's swap Strickland and Dunn. That's a good catch. So I think we're gonna call up the first baseman. I know he's like twenty or thirty two. I thought he was just twenty nine. He's even older than that. But he's had a good year at AAA. Guess what? You can you can live out your dreams of being on the 40 man and being in the MLB locker room. And then we need to fill out AAA a little bit more too. Let's look at what's going on at AAA. So Valera can start in center for us. I really thought he was more of a corner outfielder. Valera is not playing first base. Matt McLean's crushed it at AAA this year, by the way. Uh, in real life, not so much in the game. Brian Ray. Get this guy out of here. Alex McGarry. I guess he's going to play first base. George Valeric in DH, maybe? No. 
Let's do Valera to right field. McLean's not going to DH either. Richie Martin going to DH, and he's terrible. But I want McLean playing short. I think that makes sense. And, man, this team is just so bad. This is AAA, though, but it, it honestly looks a lot like our Major League lineup, so don't love that. A lot of these guys are on fire, though. Hey, Reggie Martin got to be on fire, hitting 225. Yeah, sure you are, buddy. Ellie's ice cold. Valera can be our new leadoff. I wish you could just copy the lineup and put it to left-handed pitching with no DH. Because it's frustrating. Um, Valera. Why does it keep going? I don't. I want you playing right field. <laughs> and then our first baseman will be McGarry again. And we'll uh, lead off McLean and then go Ellie, Valera, Urbaez, Hopkins, Martin. All right. And then at double A, Edwin Arroyo, I need to not be terrible. Noelvi's done a decent job. We might end up calling him up. And for the major league roster, it is a rough spot. Tyler Stevenson officially was an all-star, by the way. Um, what should the lineup look like? Votto, it's tough to, to see him playing every day. He's so bad. He's so bad. But you know what? It's his final year. We're going to put him out there. Yandy Diaz is obviously going to start at third base. So let's get Spencer Steer out of there. I think I had him starting at short. India's got to be in there, obviously. And then Steer. Okay. So I think we're in a good spot. India was a great leadoff for us. Stevenson's the obvious choice at two. Fraley has crushed from the cleanup spot all year. I don't really want to move him. So Yandi Diaz, maybe? Maybe it would be better to go Yandi at leadoff and then India. Stevenson Fraley. Yeah, I, th I think we'll do that. And then Steer is terrible. Why would Matt Reynolds start in the outfield? Why would that ever happen? Let's do... I have a lot of lefties. A lot of lefties. All right, Matt Reynolds is our starting right fielder. No, we can't be. He can't be. Chad Pinder, maybe? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get to the offseason. This team is just so brutal. They're so bad. Um, Fraley, even against lefties, he just rakes. Fado hitting eighth. We could just not play him, period, against lefties. Yeah, let's 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 play Matt Reynolds against lefties because that's better somehow. And then it gets another lefty out of the lineup. Okay, we'll do that, and then. Pinder, all right, boom. And then against righties, our leadoff can be Jonathan India. And then I still like Yandi there. Stevenson, actually, let's do Yandi three. And then we'll do Votto, somebody, Fraley. Yeah, I think that's good, right? Kepler, we could go back-to-back -back lefties. I don't love that, but why would Spencer Steer auto to right field when shortstop's open? Doesn't make any sense to me. And then we'll have, have Jay Allen in the outfield. All right. Well, the team is awful, but you guys already knew that. And... Let's make sure everything is on manual that needs to be. And then we're going to be in a good spot. So manual. All right. And I think we're about to simulate for a 
decent amount of time overall. How do we not have four valid lineups? Uh, we don't need four valid lineups. The DH is rampant. So this technically doesn't even matter, right? I can just add anybody in here. Because we'll never use that lineup. Because we'll never not have a DH. So we'll just do that. All right, cool. What's going on, Jared? Um, so today is the deadline to sign draft picks. So we're going to have to do that. And we're, we're just going to pay them. 984 for Bobby Turner. Declined? Why? I'm giving you so much more over the value. You got to be kidding me. Cliff Dell signs. So he's just gone now. All right, well. Maybe he was bad anyway. <laughs> that's that's kind of brutal. It's kind of brutal. Hopefully he sucks. All right. Ryan McKenna is no longer injured. Let's get him back in the lineup. Yeah, we can check free agency to see if he is in there. Ryan McKenna is going to start in the outfield over Jay Allen. Ryan McKenna is a beast. Versus lefties will be even better. Uh, Pender, we're going to keep out there. Who's in left? Fraley, can't move him. Vosler, DHs. Maybe, maybe Kepler doesn't play against lefties. Ryan McKenna's numbers are bad, but uh, they could be worse, I guess. Twenty-seven players. Oh, okay. You guys, I think, know who we're going to be sending down here. Matt Reynolds. Ah, oh, but he plays. He plays against lefties. So actually, Jay Allen's going to get sent down. Bye, Jay. Tyler Stevenson out for six months. Well, if the season wasn't over, it's over now. Because our new catcher for the rest of the year is Kurt Casale. And we can actually check the draft pick overalls at this point as well, right? So... Is there a way I can sort by the draft picks? Or do they not join our team until next year? All right, so this is our full draft class. It seems like we did a really good job based on potential, I would say. And Alexi Vina, our first pick, is a 75 overall. 66 contact right. 76 contact left. 47 and 62 for power. 66 vision. Discipline is a 70. Durability is 93. He's not going to get injured. And he's only 18 years old, by the way. Now, potential is not crazy or anything. He's a very good athlete. 89 speed, 88 steel. Can't bunt, but we won't want him to. Now, I am worried that the 82 potential is not significant. But he's good right now. He's good right now. So he might get the call up next year. Miguel Luis is a 70 overall starting pitcher. Although, only 81 potential. 68 hit per 9, 50K per 9, 77 walk per 9. Home run per 9 is a little lower than I'd want. Pitching clutch as well. Controls 50 is not terrible. But I would say overall, another guy that can help us win right away. 70 overall, that's Gavin Williams who we just traded for, even though Williams has better potential. Enrique Magana has 92 potential, which is phenomenal. He's 22, and he's a 67 overall. He's only got a four-seam changeup curveball, but hit per nine is good. Home run per nine is exceptional. Velo and break is really good. Everyone in chat's telling me it's a good class, which I love to hear. Mike Avento has 88 potential. Better than I expected for him, I think. 61 overall isn't quite high, but his hitting is pretty good right now. 56 contact right, 80 contact left already is Canadian, so we gotta got to knock that down a little bit. But you know what? Maybe a little Joey Votto connection? 71 vision, 60 discipline, 
69 clutch. Cannot field. Athletically, he's pretty good. Cliff Dell. Cliff Dell is interesting, actually. Only 65 potential is horrific for a 66 overall, but that's not a terrible overall. Power is all right. Pretty good athlete. I mean, he's not great. I'm not going to talk that one up. And then Dwayne Church is a 60 overall with 87 potential. Also quite good. 66 hit per nine. 62K per nine. Velocity is 99. Throws only a four seam, two seam, and a change up. But not bad. I would say that's a pretty nice draft class. Not like incredible, but not bad. Not bad. All right. And uh, we're not winning more. I wow, We got a Tyler Stevenson. I mean, the season's over. We know that. The season's over. Yandy moves up. Let's go. Yandy, Votto. Actually, we'll go back to back lefties. Whatever. It's right handers. Kepler can move up slightly. This team this team's so bad. No DH. Let's put Kirk Casale. Doesn't matter. Okay, versus DH. This one matters. Casale can't hit three for us. I'm just going to move Fraley up. He just hits. Dude, Matt Reynolds is having a year. Not bad. I can't have Kurt Casale clean up. Tyler Stevenson going down is devastating to our team. It's so bad. It's so bad. All right. Just fix this fix the lineups. Austin Hendricks back. Cam Collier. Still gonna be injured for five to six months. What do you think I want to do? Dude. The injury bug is killing this team as well. Is that they weren't already bad enough. We have made it to September. We are 54 and 82. It seems like we are always three and seven in our last ten. Which is devastating. I'm hearing that Matt Reynolds is actually white. Uh, and the chat is hearing back now that I don't care. Not in this franchise, he's not. Don't know why, but that's how he is. <laughs> um, I'm actually tempted to just end the season here. I mean, our best player is injured. The team is brutally bad. We're going to have it auto-fix. And I think we're going to go ahead and simulate to the end of the year. So, we're going on a bit of a win streak in September. Oh my goodness. Our minor league playoffs are about to begin at double A, even though triple A didn't make it. Look at this September. We're actually like 500. <laughs> Maybe even slightly better than 500. It's incredible. Who did we end up calling up? So, let's see. Our pitchers seem mostly the same. Stevenson's still injured. He had a great year, though. Votto is terrible. Did hit 25 home runs. India, six home runs the entire year. His power against righties is going down. That sucks. Yandy Diaz, I think, is going down. But he had a really nice year. Ellie got the call up. Can I see his AAA numbers? That's frustrating. Cam Collier at AA, not doing too bad. And Carnacion Strand is raking in real life at AAA. Can't even hit AA pitching in the game. And then Noel V. Marte also got the CPU call up, which is earlier than I would have. But that is the risk you run when stuff gets turned to automatic. Which I don't, uh, I did it. I'm okay with it. Uh, we'll just, we run out of another option. Jake Fraley, by the way, look at his boosts. This is incredible. Plus 11 contact left on the season, plus six contact right. And he just had a great year. 302 average, 385 on base. OPS was at 853. Hit 18 home runs for us, 30 doubles. 
And we still have time left in the season, but that's great. Max Kepler ended up having a pretty good year. Not too bad. OPS over 800. Nice. And when we picked him up, he was struggling a little bit. George Valera also got the call up. Played way more than I wanted. I think that might have hurt his uh, development a little bit. Ryan McKenna hit fine, honestly. And then Will Benson sucks. Um, but that is pretty much the season, guys. I thought about doing the minor league playoffs, but I think we're going to end it here. Our season overall was a massive failure. <laughs> I mean, just realistically, it was. Juan Soto wins MVP. And um, Aaron Judge gets it in the American League. Pretty good job. American League Cy Young is Shohei Otani. In the NL, it goes to Max Scherzer. The batting title goes to Freddie Freeman and Vinny Pasquantino. Okay. Wow. Reliever of the year is John Schreiber, who's now on the Rangers. Camilo Duvall in the NL. I'm looking for a red to pop up in any of this. Tatis wins rookie of the year. <laughs> we had to add him in manually. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what a year. 817 OPS, though, not terrible. Oh, man, this game is something else. Um, Jake Shiner. Don't even know who this is. And I'm pretty familiar with the uh, Mariners farm system. No idea who that is. Not super familiar, obviously, but fairly. Did we have a gold glover, I wonder? Probably not. Probably didn't. Are there any Reds in here anywhere? Yandy Diaz gets votes at least. Finishes second, it looks like, in front of Key Brian Hayes, which is crazy. Fraley gets up there in the National League top three. Uh, and I don't think we're going to have anyone in there for the Silver Slugger. Like, Tyler Stevenson would have, but he got injured. I think he would have been in there. Jake Fraley might be up there, but I don't think he's going to win it. Didn't even get consideration. Oh, because it's, it's only outfield. Um, tough. Very, very tough. Hunter Green, I would say, had a pretty good year. 3-6 ERA, you love to see. Nick Lodolo started to get better as the season went on. 5-5 five, five ERA, though, is not good. Graham Ashcraft looked like it was awesome. A 3-5 ERA we're going to take. Yanni Chirino, sub-4, not too bad. Gavin Williams, did he just stop developing? Did he not play? I don't know what's going on with that. Should have made sure of that. Um, relievers, for the most part, were really good. We got Caleb Ferguson, that's right. Alexis Diaz was really bad. I mean, what could have been with Tyler Stevenson, man? I mean, look at his boosts. Look at this. Upgrades across the board. Dislocated ankle. I mean, that it's brutal. Joey Votto was terrible. Did finish with 25 home runs. India. Um, Jonathan India is fine. That's the thing. Like He's not an elite player. I, I would like him to be a little bit over 700 as opposed to a little bit under. 700 is still not great, but it's, it's like whatever. Unfortunate. Yandi was awesome, but he's getting worse. Spencer Steer was... Just awful. Noel B. Marte should not have been called up. Jake Fraley had a great year. I mean, just fantastic. Really can't say enough nice things about him. Uh, but we'll go and, uh, you know, take what we learned this season and hopefully apply it to next season. And what I learned was that Kevin Newman is awful and our team sucks. Dodgers have beat the Angels in the World Series. Battle for LA. Unreal. And my farm director retired. Okay, well, uh, that is going to do it for this season, guys. Randy Wynn and Chase Anderson both retired because they suck. Um, and that is going to do it for this episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching as Miggy and Cano go to the Hall of Fame. We'll see what happens with Cano in real life. I would be a little bit surprised at this point just because of the steroid stuff. Uh, and then, as you can see here 
are our free agents. If you think Joey Votto will be a red next year, you are mistaken. I'm going to tell you that in advance. But I thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.